Vlee did not make it to the major, but how? No! Oh no, it ends here! No! Oh. Well, today we will break down all the mistakes that led to them not getting into the first ever CS2 major. For this video, I have categorized all of their mistakes into these different categories. To show you how insane some of these mistakes were, the major Blee did not qualify for the RMR. And the first category are normal mistakes. These are mistakes all team makes on a daily basis, but are always good to learn from. This one starts normal with a 3-2 setup from Bleed, with 2 players towards apartment and 3 players towards top middle. While Entropic starts the round in a 1-3-1 setup with 3 players in middle, 1 in window and 2 going underground, with the best spawn, and they have 1 player on A and the last on B. And these are just here for information. The main goal of the round are the underground players. A big problem versus these setups that Entropic are playing are that the T's will usually peak solo, and this is what happens. Humpers and Zerks are going apps, but only Humpers are going down to underground, and since the top mid players are hiding here, Bleed have no calls if anyone could have pushed underground. So to see Humpus go down solo here is kind of insane. And here he is found rather quick and Bleed has lost the man advantage already. As well as when the mid push from top middle comes, Bleed should be able to clean up the round. But just in mid, we see another case of this lackluster team play. Lonex solo peaks top middle and if it were not for Collins missing some crucial shots, this would have been another death that Bleed could not trade back. As well as when Entropic's underground players are falling off, Bleed should now be able after killing the window player to get this player, since Sir can make sure Bleed are not moving away from underground, while the top mid players can fight them. But here again, Bleed splits up with one going catwalk, one staying top mid and one joining catwalk but behind. And if we see the POE of Bleed, they can't fight together to get the underground players who are pushing on this flash from the A side player. And rather quickly, Bleed loses the pistol round, since they're not able to trade any kills that Entropic got. And so did Longs, the heavy hitter, the artillery barrage Meister himself, but Milky goes in for two more and this pistol round is just sliding away from Bleed. Sirk in an unenviable position of three players spraying at him in underpass. Bleed starts around perfect. They understand by giving away top mid control, they need to do something fast on any of the sites. And here Lonex is going out on A from ramp early. And so far, this is perfect. This will allow Bleed to fully focus A, and then giving up middle is no issue. But there is something I do not like in this round. Bleed need to take with them. And that is how they are playing versus a lower buy. Look at Bleed. Let's see the POV of the ramp players. See how split up they are behind the smoke? Lonex out here alone could easily die to Tissian's SMG. And no one on Bleed can trade him fast enough. And you can almost see this happening. Tissian finds one kill, and if Lonex were not that close, this would have been a kill that was not traded back. So in the end, Bleed wins the round, but they're playing way too apart to say this was a success of a round. Something to understand in these rounds are the guns you are playing versus. On the Bleed side we had 5 AKs, while on the Tropic side we had 3 M4s, 1 from Mars and 1 SMG. And both teams will play to the advantage of the guns. So Bleed, as we saw, wanted to take long range fights, so to see Lonex solo play close versus worse guns is insane. As well as Bleed sending the AK solo apps, that's not ideal as well, but Bleed won the round so I should not overthink it. Necessarily an ideal position for this weaponry. As Sirk goes in, Tizian may get one, but there's no way he's surviving. Longs was absolutely lethal when we saw them previously. Into this round, he gets a nice pick towards CT. Collins overwhelmed on the spam by Connector. In the start, Bleed looked amazing. And I loved the coordination here from the two mid players, Sirk and Lonex. Here we can see Zerk holds middle, until he's smoked off. Then he goes for this nade, but waits to pop the smoke and break it, until Lonex on short is ready to peek with him. And I love this, but where's the mistake? Well, this round is a roller coaster, like most rounds with bleed. As soon as we see something good, we go up on the roller coaster, we see a massive mistake and we shoot right down again. So when you as a CT has gotten mid control, what is your next move? Do you A, keep middle control and play around that? B, falls back and now rather holds? Or C, take more map control? All of these options are good, since if you pick A, you keep mid control and control of the early and middle game phase. And then rather uses time to retake. Well, if you pick the B option, it's a safer option where you tell yourself you know what's happening in middle, so let's focus somewhere else. And be more ready for the site hold. While C is a more aggressive version of this, but it can make sense to really nail down where the enemy are and what their plan is. Bleed pick C, and here you can't make any mistakes. And here keep in mind, Bleed are 3 players on B, so the 2 A players taking ramp control is a massive gamble. 
and in ramp and tropic are two players and bleed will be able to hear the smokes being thrown and pulled so this is the holy grail of any ramp pushes but let's put both bleed players pov to do this play you need to be coordinated and this is why i talked about the early game great coordination let's see if they can still do that faven hears the nade and the flash as well as the player dropping down but he still manages to get flashed he turns and turns back into the flash forcing cypher to peek out and make sure Faven do not die while blinded. Only problem is that Faven can't trade, so Cypher needs to win this first fight. But there's a problem too, Cypher walked back, so he needs to swing into the ramp player, and this goes as well as Cypher's TSM days, and Collins can find two kills and just open up sight. Out of the shop, playing for the B-side bombardment. Meanwhile, Faven posts up close ramp, playing anti-flash, turned into it though, Vince. Can't respond because of it. Turned slightly too early. Collins gets a double because of that, and the A-side defense is crumbling. Now we are over to the category I like to call straight up trolls. These are where we can find massive weaknesses and mistakes that Bleed as a team have done. We need to talk about the setup. Bleed and Entropic are playing. Bleed are in round 7, going for a 4-1 setup with 4 players towards A, 3 towards ramp, 1 in palace, while then having 1 lurker in middle. This is a common setup, so no hate here. While Entropic are going for a 2-3 setup with 2 on A, fully focusing ramp, and then 3 on B, 2 going for the short boost and 1 holding apps. So where is the problem? Well, first of all, Faven is way too far out in apps this early. Since, let's say Merix would jump up and kill him. His teammate can't trade him back. But this is not the troll we will see. Let me ask you all of this first. How do you deal with these two ramp players this far pushed towards ramp in the setup bleed has? Well, I would have made sure to flash ramp, have two players peeking, and then Faven peeking from palace towards ramp to split the attention of both ramp players. And here bleed tries, but it's not good enough. Milky plays with the AWP on the right side, just where the flash does not hit, since they are throwing a flash to hit the player more to the left. And as we can see, the player more to the left is already playing anti-flash. And here Milky can get a free kill running towards him with his back turned. A flash like this is just a disaster in the end. It's such a crucial miss of a troll. And here are the consequences. Bleed setup are built on that they can get ramp control. And that is all good, but you need to get ramp control then. And Milky and Collins are able to get 3 kills before Faven and Cypher can trade back. And let's be honest, if Entropic had one more player on A, and let's say he's in the standard position of jungle, Bleed would be done, since Faven just runs out without clearing it properly. But here Faven did a great job getting one kill and Cypher finding one more. But here Faven after this decides to solo win map control of CT. This is not needed, since Bleed has planted the bomb. And here he challenges 3 players and can't get anything. Something we talked about in the entry fragger video I made is that to push into CT is a death trap and gives away all Faven had worked for, for taking sight. Over the corner, the first pick should be a bit of a freebie. They want to flash him off the angle. Delayed response, trade coming quickly. The scope strikes against two. Faven survives on entry and we're down to a 3v3 site push. That was a well crafted entry there from Faven as well. Systematically pushing Palace while they went through on ramp side. And they smoked that Molly, so he knows multiple players around here. Gets peeked in from smoke. Tizzing out in the open. The spray's not there. This round, bleed wins. But we have to talk about how crazy the round is, so let's jump into action. Bleed has gotten the best start to the setup possible. With full mid control with 3 players, Cypher lurking in apps has gotten full apps control without being seen. So how do Bleed almost fumble the bag? But let's see. Entropic up 2 players on B, 1 in mid and 2 on A. So where's the mistake? Well, Milky on the AWP goes for a jump spot. And here, he either gets stuck, or he might have meant to land on the edge of the minivan. And here Cypher can find this kill. Amazing, right? With this skill and full mid control, all Bleed has to do is to kill the last B player before Entropic's rotation are coming. But here, like always, after something goes well, something has to go worse. And here Cypher must have thought his mid players were on short and ready to already go to site, or his second apps player were closer so he could trade. And he walks out without clearing short from apps, and this is a free kill for Oxygen. And here Entropic plays it perfect, while Bleed are not. After Cypher is found, Oxygen understands something is happening in mid. And here turns his attention to the worst spacing I've seen in a while. Look at apps first. Humpus has gotten to Cypher, but waits here while he dies. So when Humpus want to swing, Oxygen will already be able to start to fight the catwalk players, so Humpus will have no impact here. And here look at catwalk. Cirque goes for ladder room, while the two other short players, well, they are focusing on the con spam, and allows Oxygen to kill two players lining up, something that should never happen, but Cirque is able to find two great kills and saves the round. But we are seeing some amazing fails so far. 
the molly. Pampus comes over to assist, and Oxygen needs to backstab. Gets one, turns on a dime towards short. They line up for him. Silences two as the trade comes in. Sirk, beautiful reply. Hey all, I made a Discord channel to be the best place to learn CS and more. We have strats, smokes, and more. So join if you want to improve today. This round is a definition of not knowing what to do after you get the advantage. So let's see how this round goes. Bleed starts in a 1 3 1 setup where two players will take middle control with these nades and then two players running up towards top middle while then having one player on A and one on B. While Entropic are going for a 1 3 1 setup with three players going middle to peak top middle, one to B to lurk and one on A to lurk. And here Bleed are able to find two kills top middle as well as killing Marix going out on A solo to find some trades. So where's the mistake? Well again, we are seeing these glimpses of brilliance from Bleed only for them to fumble again. So after Bleed got his amazing opening kills, 3 for 2, they let their foot off the gas. And here we can see both A players falls off to play safer and even rotates over towards middle. And here's the first issue I have. Bleed are split up to a 1-1-1 setup with all 3 players playing solo versus 2 players. And Anthropic will almost guaranteed play together. So to split up like this is never ideal. And here Colin solo mid wins the fight against the window player who is over peeking into middle. No need for that. And look how bad the positions are from bleed. Both players are as far away from each other on the CT half of the map as possible, with one on car and one in CT on A. This allows Entropic to get so much info and map control before taking sight. And here Oxygen can trade his teammate who whiffed and win the 1v2, since bleed were so split up and couldn't trade. Such an amazing opening has gone to waste. Him out soon, he could deny the plant and send the whole thing packing. Uh, taking this longer avenue though, approached, gives him the advantage with the AK, but he still comes out second best. The MP9 rips and tears through his head, and although Hampus goes down, he's at least stalled enough time for Favon's rotation to be up close and personal. Five seconds on the clock, Favon gets spotted, however. He's gonna try and take the fight to Oxygen, who takes the head, removes it, and kicks it into the dirt. I just had to show you all this round, and the start of it. Since it has an amazing fail I have never seen before I feel like. Bleed has understood that mid is the place to be. And here they want to take mid with two players, one pushing mid and one staying in window before going into connector. And here is the issue, visual information. When Cypher moves into mid, he stays in the smoke and this makes it so he can hear everything that's happening around him but not see. So when Zerg pushes Kong to help him deal with the catwalk player, well this happened. And this is how Bleed lost Mirage and is one map down in the BO3 in the last map to qualify for the major. Something like this should never even be possible. Five passes him and gets a pick up onto your primary orb. Zerk drop, Cypher struggling for the follow up as well, Vince. We are over to Ancient and here let's again start with the normal mistakes. And Tropic are going for a fast play to take A site. And this is kind of perfect since Bleed has left A open. So let's skip to the retake to see how this goes. The retake is a 4v5, but Humpus is found through the smoke and is the first domino to fall. But it's still a 4v4, but let's now look over how bleed are positioned. They got two players in spawn stuck behind a smoke, one hiding inside the smoke in the corner, and the last player in donut behind a smoke. This makes it so that bleed has no information when going for the retake, and by then finding four players is much harder. So let's see how Entropic are set up. They got Oxygen on site as the first contact and line of defense. One player inside of main holding for any flanks, one towards big box to hold temple and one on the boost in an off angle. And they are just so much more prepared than Bleed are. Here the retake starts and Bleed fumbles the bag. For this retake they need to deal with Oxygen first. When the smoke fade, Oxygen are able to find the first kill. And this forces Faven to try to refray. But when you are put on the spot like that, you need to come up with a plan for how to swing and peek. And this usually never goes well. And here when Faven tries to swing Oxygen, Oxygen are able to find one more kill. And since Zerk went solo to temple after Faven dies, Humpus and Zerk are split up. And here Oxygen who is just the king of the round finds Humpus through the smoke since Humpus started to spam it, making him an easy target to track through the smoke and Zerk is dealt with rather quick as well. There's a player actually behind that smoke in the form of Longs. That smoke is going to clear and it will be a gimme. It will be a straightforward frag. Oxygen goes back in for two more, spinning around and taking this round alongside with him. So Bleed are playing a weird game right now. They've started with a split where one will go ramp, one will stay in spawn, one stay outside of B and then one in mid and one going towards A main. And here we are seeing a problem. 
Both teams are almost on a full buy, so to see Lonex solo peak up ramp in such a key round and die is not ideal, and just gives away the advantage to the CT. As well as Humpus had a flash smoke and even a nade to help Lonex out with this play, and here he did not use any of it. And when this happens, as soon as Lonex dies, this forces 3 players to start to take middle, to win back some map control. So here we can see how Fava and Cypher and Shirk are all going middle to do this and take control of site. And here is a second issue. Cypher solo peeks middle into the open donut, since Collins front cave took Shirk and Fava's attention by going for the spam, and just like that, two solo peak has put bleed in a bad position, and the rest of the round is lost due to some silly early mistakes. Too many strikes up ramp where he just swings in on his own. No room for a trade there. No backup, no util. Goes in raw and gets nothing. Shadow advantage for Milky bodes well. Strikes onto Cypher. Meanwhile, the middle murderer of Marix will come back in with two. And Collins assists the strike down on Favon. My favorite category has to be this one, straight up pros. Since this makes you understand that pros are just slightly better than your average player. When we see them make these mistakes, I will show you here. So this one starts in middle, and here we can see the issue already. B has three players in middle, one top mid, circle pushing the sidewalk and one towards the donut entrance for middle. So I need to ask myself, in a game where you can break smokes, why is Cirque alone in bottom middle up here in the open? And here bleed smokes like this to smoke bottom mid, and then they nade it so Sir can peek to try to get a kill towards B ramp, since the molt of a nade combo will force the T's out of middle. But let's stop here. KV smoked so Sir can't have any info or kills from mid towards B. And now that the T will break the smoke, while well, Sir is just a sitting duck, nowhere to go, and here he is found and dealt with. And Bleed can't trade back at all. This forces the Cypher to try to get a kill back in middle, but with no risk evaluation. He jumps out here to go towards middle, and Collins can come behind him and get one more kill and the Tropic are up with two kills. And the round is lost, and Bleed has no money going into the next round. I'm very curious as to what's going to take shape as this game continues on, but yes, a couple of worrying signs, or if you Bleed, you just say, oh, that was a fluke. Let's not get too carried away by this one. Collins is going to be coming through that smoke. Cypher, oh, the spray is labored again, and he gets punished once again. Bleed start off great, finding one kill towards B, but what happens after is the problem. After this kill, Bleed figures out they want to leave mid and focus on site holds and the retake. So here both mid players stops to look at bottom mid. And this is a massive mistake and feels a lot like a lack of awareness from the bleed team. And here Matrix can walk out middle and find two kills. With Zerk jumping back after he got flashed with his back turned and Hampus just not ready for the trade. But I need to ask, how is this possible? And Tropic used a flash and all to peek out. And Cypher had cave control, so Entropic could only peek middle from bottom mid and not Fortnite. So to see Bleed completely forget about this is insane, and they loses 2 kills as a consequence of this. And Faven, as a solo A player, peeks out and get a 1 for 1 trade, and just like that the round is lost for Bleed. This time around he hits the first mark with the response to barrel out and fight for control through middle. Marix looking for the trades and the spray transfer is absolutely brilliant. This man's been playing his refrag. Next category for Ancient are the XVX situations. So we can learn how they play in a 4v4, 3v3 and more to see how the team play are in these type of scenarios. But the way Bleed played this round is so uncoordinated. Let's look at Bleed's setup. They got Cypher in the corner, one towards middle, going towards B, and then one in Donut and one on A side. So by the looks of it, it seems like this is a good setup in the 4v3. Well, Entropic has decided to take B side. And here there are two players in cave and one in ramp. On paper, it seems like a good setup until the execute happens. Cypher in the corner is a sitting duck and can only get a one for one trade. But the short player who needs to help Cypher and bail him out, well, he has utility in his hand, and it's just killed like that. As well as Cypher before the execute focused ramp together with the short player, so no one was even watching cave, and allows both cave players to get the trade, and just like that, it's a 2v2. And on the retake, bleed splits up again, and here is found. No idea why they do this in a 2v2 retake. Felt eyes looking down on him from the back and turns, but Cypher still wins on the duel. He's repositioned back into the cubby, tucks in as far as he can. Collins takes the fight to CT. Good for one. Timing's there for the swing. The AWP has the upper hand, and Bombsite has been taken by Entropic. It's low time. Bleed has two low players, but it's a 3v3, very doable. And I love how Bleed starts his execute. They have two players in Donut and a Cypher on the Lurk. So where does it go wrong? Well, for starters, both of the low players are going Donut. 
meaning in a tight space like Donut and the entrance towards site, Molotov and a nade will be able to deal with them rather quickly. As well as they are peeking into the CTs rather than the CTs peeking into them. Not ideal as well. But Cypher has to be the difference maker in this round. And when he has gotten red room, he has two CT players coming towards him. A perfect opportunity to get two kills and win the round. But the time is low and Cypher wants to rather help his teammate. In hindsight, this might not have been the best to do. But there's no way Cypher could have known this. But his teammates in Donut finds the upper, and it's now a 3v2 and they're able to plant, so where can it go wrong? Well Cypher has run into Temple, from CT, and here allows Matrix to move up past him without being seen. So Matrix can be a difference maker for Anthropic. And here, he walks out and finds one player on site, and this forces Cypher to go to help on site. But when he can't get anything on site, he walks back, and by now, Collins have taken CT and Temple control, and Cypher walks into his death. And just like that, an important round is lost for Bleed, and Bleed has no more money going into the next round. Still heavily in favor of Entropic this round. So much relies on this lurk from Cypher. Ooh, his spidey senses are tingling. Flicks round, nice heads up flashbang over the top for the CTs, right down the middle. That one won't connect, giving him room to breathe. Cypher now playing on the off angle, deep towards back temple. Waits for the fight to come out, but Marix has already worked his way up. Cleaves onto the first. Zerg has been dropped. Flashbang in his hands. Pops that towards Donut to clean across. Cypher falls in a 1v1. All on Lorks. 14 HP. AK to get the job done. He pre-fires Vince. Gives up his position and crumbles because of it. I think the last round just shows all that has been wrong for Bleed and how weak they are versus off angles. So let's explain. It's a 5v5, so a normal round, and Bleed has decided to go 4 players into Donut. And from Donut you need to clear a lot of angles. Like all the corners in Donut, the entrance to site, back site, big box, boost, close angles and more. So there's a lot to focus on. But as 4 players, this should not be a problem, right? Well Entropic has 3 players on A site, kinda reading this play, with 1 in this off angle, and then 1 back site and 1 temple. The goal of Entropic are to make the Temple player take first contact, so the Donut player's off angles can pay off. And here walking in, Tissian gets the luckiest timing ever. Humpus clears the corner, then goes back and repositions to be ready for the pre-aim towards the right side of Donut. But Tissian is able to walk into where Humpus just cleared, and this is heartbreaking, since this round is won by such an unfortunate timing, but not the one you think. The spacing on Bleed walking out of Donut is horrendous. Look at how all 3 players line up. Batissian is found. Batissian is the decoy, and Oxygen is able to find 2 kills and assist, since Bleed need to focus him and the Temple player. And Entropic takes match point, while Bleed is stuck on the last round with low money for 3 out of 5 players. No! Oh no, it ends here! No! Oh. Bleed is a new team, not a lot of practice. New to the scene and has not built up a proper system yet. So to think they would qualify for the major, or let's say the RMR, this soon would be a tough challenge. But I'm ready to see what they will bring in the future and hopefully this team will shine. Since they have a great coach, captain and players. Thanks for watching and here are two videos YouTube told me you would like. Bye.